good afternoon one and all today we will going to discuss about the difference between analog and digital communication before seeing the actual difference between the analog and digital communication what is the mean by the signal the signal is the electric signal is generally represented as the change in the voltage over the time and the change occurs when voltage begins at a zero and it increases until it peaks the signal then drops back down at the lowest level in the computer network we send the information from one computer to the another and this information may be the form of the data voice picture and so on in order to transmit this information across the network it needs to be electromagnetic signal and therefore the computer network information flow from one system to the another in the form of the signal via the transmission media basically the signal is nothing but the electrical signal electrical signal is generally represented by the voltage and the voltage it just changes with respect to the time which is called as the signal then the signal can be there are the two types first is the analog signal and the digital signal in the analog signal from this figure we have understand that this is the sine wave and here is the square wave from this sine wave is nothing but it is the analog signal and this analog signal where amplitude should be changes with respect to the time where the specified voltage level that is the plus vcc and the ground ground is a generally represented by the logic 0 and the plus vcc is a represented by the logic 1 when the network card transmit the data across the network it sends out the signal that the fluctuates in the voltage and the pattern that signal makes it is called as the waveform basically there are the two type of the waveform that is the sine wave and the square wave then we move towards the analog signal what is mean by the analog signal an analog signal is the continuous wave from that changes smoothly over the time analog signal is a continuous wave it is the continuous wave and that will be changes smoothly over the time means its amplitude that amplitude will be changes with respect to the time analog signal can have the infinite number of the values and the varies continuously with the time then analog signal is usually represented by the sine wave then each cycle it consists of the single arc above the time axis and followed by below the time axis then the analog signal is the human voice human voice is the example of the analog signal when we speak we use the air to transmit an analog signal an electrical signal from an audio tape and can also be in the analog form the basic characteristics of the analog signal what is the basic characteristics of the analog signal the first characteristic is the amplitude is the amplitude of the signal refers to the height of the signal and it is equal to the vertical distance from the uh, given point on the waveform to the horizontal axis then the maximum amplitude of the sine wave is equal to the highest value it reach on the vertical axis then next the next is the amplitude there are the n number of the parameters and that parameter is able to measure the amplitude the amplitude is measured in the volts it is amplitude here analog signal is in the form of the current in the form of the power and the voltage is used to measure the volt the current is used to measure for ampere and power is used to measure for the watt then each cycle second parameter of the analog signal is the period what is mean by the period basically the period refers to the amount of the time in which the single signal completes the one cycle means the redundant cycles is going to be running in the analog signals and there is a complete one cycle means there are amount of the time in which signal the completes the one cycle which is called as the time period and it is measured in a second 
the other units is used to measure that is the period and the uh, period is measured in millisecond microsecond nanosecond picosecond also these are the units of the periods then frequency basically the frequency the relationship between the frequency and the time period is that the frequency is inversely proportional to the period and period is inversely proportional to the frequency but it refers to the number of the wave patterns completed in the given time of the period is called as the frequency uh, to be more precise the frequency refers to the number of the periods in one second and number of the cycles in the per second and frequency is measured in hertz the unit of the frequency is hertz then each cycle consists of here the other units used to express the frequency and that frequency is used here to used to express the frequency is in the kilohertz megahertz gigahertz and the terahertz also and the frequency and period are inversely proportional to the each other from this figure we have understand that in a one second there are 1 2 3 4 and 5 basically 5 to 6 cycle is completed within a one second that's the that one cycle one cycle which is equal to period which is equal to 1 upon 5 second and from that 1 upon 5 is inversely proportional to the frequency hence it is the 5 hertz this frequency is the 5 hertz then phase the next is the phase and the phase is described as the position of the waveform relative to the time zero and the phase describe the amount of by which the waveform is shifted forward and backward along the time axis it indicates that's the status of the first cycle means phase is measured in the degree or radians and the phase shift of the 360 degree indicates that a shift of the complete period the shift of 180 degree indicates that a shift of the half period a phase shift of the 90 degree indicates that a shift of the quarter of the period means how much the signal is a transmitted that will be indicated by the phase shift parameter then from this figure we have seen here is the amplitude and time period for the zero phase shift because there is a complete one cycle and that complete one cycle should be completed within a one second or one times per division hence it's the zero phase shift but from this figure we have indicated that here is the starting point and here is the ending point should be same hence here is the phase shift from this figure here to here the phase shift is the 90 degree if the phase shift is the 90 degree then your starting point here and the next cycle is starting from here then your phase shift is the 90 degree once the cycle will be starting from here and another cycle will be starting from here then your phase shift is the 180 degree then the phase shift is the 360 degree or 0 degree means your starting point and ending point should be same then your phase shift is the 360 degree or 0 degree then advantages of the analog signal what is the advantages of the analog signal first advantages is that it is the best suited for the transmission of audio and video then it consumes the less bandwidth than the digital signal to carry the same information because in case of the analog signal in where amplitude will be changes with respect to the time parameter hence it consumes the less bandwidth less bandwidth rather than the digital signal and analog signal are readily in place around the world because any digital system is which is within the appliances is in the system only but once the signal is come from the system your signal is always in a analog form either the digital data is transmitted uh, then where digital data is encoding and after the encoding uh, with the help of the shift keying techniques your data will be come in the form of digital data is represented in the form of the analog signals
the next is the analog signal are less susceptible to the noise means once the analog signal is a less susceptible to the noise as compared to the digital signal then we move towards the digital signal in case of the digital signal a digital signal is a discrete form means it's having the two values only either the logic 0 or logic 1 and it can have only the limited number of the defined value such as the 1 and 0 the transmission of the digital signal from one value to the another value or it will be transmitted for the instantaneous then digital signal are represented by a square wave means it is just like a clock clock having there are only two values that is the logic 0 or 1 or plus vcc or ground in digital signal 1 is a represented by having a positive voltage and the 0 is a represented by having a no voltage or zero voltage then all the signal are generated by the computer and other digital devices are in the digital nature from this figure we have understand that this is the digital signal and from that digital signal the uh, repeatedly there are one after another the logic one logic zero or logic one logic zero it will be able to transmit it one after another Hence, there is a necessary, there are the some characteristics, basic characteristics of the digital signal and which is very important by measuring the system capability, efficiency, then its uh, rate of the information. First is the bit interval. The first characteristic is the bit interval. From this bit interval, it is the time required to send a one signal bit, one single bit means how much of the time should be required to send a single bit which is called as the bit interval then what is the bit rate so here the bit rate it refers to the number of the bit interval in the one second therefore the bit rate is the number of the bit sent in a one second in a one second how many number of the bits is transmitted which is called as the bit rate the next is the bit rate is generally expressed in the bits per second and other unit is expressed in the rates are the kilobytes per second megabytes per second gigabytes per second etc and this bit rate and bit interval means the single bit how many uh, single bit is able to transmit it which is called as the bit bit rate and bit interval bit interval means from here the bit interval means it is the time required to send one signal and that all the digital data is able to transmit it which is called as the bit rate the advantages of the digital signal the first advantages of the digital signal is that it is the best suited for the transmission of the digital data then digital data can be easily compressed then digital information can be encrypted means for security purpose whatever your digital information that digital information can be encrypted before the sending the information through the channel then the next is the equipment that will be used as the digital signals is more common and the less expensive because whatever the cards and uh, PCBs is used which is uh, less expensive and easily troubleshoot then it provides the better clarity because the all signal must be either ones or zeros then in analog signal and the digital signal we have compared here from this time being how to compare the digital signal and the analog signal these are the number of the parameters the first parameter is the nature values a representation diagram and the example with the help of this five parameter we have compared the analog signal and the digital signal first the analog signal is the continuous waveform means it is the smoothly changes with respect to the time its value cannot predict it because it can have the infinite number of the values of the sine wave because the amplitude is the changes with respect to the time with reference to this diagram 
and the last is that the example is that the human voice in air it is the nature of the analog signal then second is the digital signal in the digital signal is the discrete form in which the value changes instantaneously means it is the logic 0 or logic 1 then it can be it can have the limited values of 0 and 1 uh, suppose there is example of the square wave from this square wave uh, there are the two logic level this is the reference line and from that reference line the above the reference line it will be treated as the logic 1 and the below the reference line it will be treated as the logic 0 then the signal the uh, generated by the computer is the example of the digital signal then a very important parameter in case of the digital transmission of the signal the data rate the maximum data rate of a channel the maximum rate at which the data can be transmitted over the given communication path or channel under the given condition is known as the channel capacity and that channel capacity is a generally defined by the three parameters the first parameter is the bandwidth of the channel level of the signal and the quality of the channel these three parameters with the help of these three parameters we have calculated the channel capacity in a digital transmission or digital communication system the quality of the channel is basically concerned with the level of the noise present on the channel means how much amount of the noise will be occurred or it will be able to absorb the noise from the external environment that will be decided by the channel capacity and that channel capacity we have to be calculated how much the uh, channel capacity we have to calculate it with the help of the two different formulas using the two theorems that is Nyquist theorem and the Shannon capacity theorem the Nyquist theorem for the noiseless channel and the Shannon capacity formula for the noisy channel means Nyquist theorem it will be treated as for the noiseless channel but the Shannon capacity formula it will be treated for the noisy channel in case of the Nyquist theorem basically Nyquist derived the limit of the bit rate for the perfectly noiseless channel but noiseless channel is not available uh, in a reality or in a practice because it states that in channel suppose in copper copper cable there is aluminium copper aluminium and copper combination you have to be make the communication channel optical fiber cable copper clad then uh, coaxial cable every communication channel there is a necessary its own resistance and that own resistance will be offered or it will be impact on the capacity of that channel and according to the Nyquist theorem it states that if the B is a bandwidth of the transmission channel and which carries a signal having the L level L level the maximum bit rate we have to be calculated that is the R which is equal to 2 B log 2 to the base base 2 to the L uh, for example we consider the noiseless channel having the bandwidth is the 300 Hertz and the transmitting a signal the two signal levels the maximum data rate of the channel will be calculated with the help of this formula that is the R which is equal to 2B, B is the 300 Hertz, the bandwidth is the 300 Hertz and its level, there are the two levels because 0 and 1. So we have to be calculated here, R which is equal to 2 into 3000 into log 2 to the base 2 which is equal to 6000 bits per second. This, this formula for the noiseless channel is completely theoretical and will not give the accurate result because of the following reasons the first reason is that no transmission channel is practically noiseless this in in reality every channel there is bit own resistance and that own resistance is definitely impacted on the channel capacity if we increase the number of the signal levels then the bit rate will not increase means if we increase the number of the signal levels suppose there are in case of the digital data the 0 is a, a represented by logic 0 and 1 is a represented by plus VCC there are only the two levels either you are able to increase the level of the signals 
then it will not increase the beat rate because beat rate is a generally depends upon the bandwidth parameter because we when the number of the signal level are increased it creates the burden on the receiver and reduce the reliability of the system so why we not able to use this nyquist criteria or nyquist theorem uh, for calculation of the beat rate because of that this is the very important reason when the number of the signal levels are increased it creates a burden on the receiver and it reduces the reliability of the system so we move towards the shannon capacity formula and in case of the shannon capacity formula the signal to noise ratio should be considered here is also practically it is not possible to have the noiseless channel and in 1994 the cloud shannon defines the formula called the channel capacity to determine the theoretical highest data rate for the noisy channel the amount of the thermal noise present is measured by the ratio of signal power to the noise power called as the signal to noise ratio and the signal power is represented by s and the noise power is represented by n and signal to noise ratio is s by n hence the signal to noise ratio is expressed in the decibels so shannon equation it will be put the limit on the number of the levels then the number of the level required for the beat rate is the 30000 beats per second and can be computed from the nyquist formula then finally we move towards the actual analog transmission and digital transmission in a communication system means in analog transmission in the analog communication system digital transmission in the digital communication system with reference to the num and 12 number of the factor that is the nature of the signal values cost effect of the noise efficiency security and privacy integration attenuation maintenance cost multiplexing technique error detection and example the first is the nature of the signal in the analog communication or analog transmission system it is the continuous waveform in case of the digital transmission it is the discrete form then its value is the infinite value that is because the amplitude of the signal will be changes with respect to the time parameter and here the limited values uh, suppose in case of the digital transmission digital transmission is in the form of the clocks then it having the only two values that is the logic 0 and the logic 1 then its cost cost is the low and its cost is the high means initial cost for the analog transmission system is the low because uh, all are the very low cost the material should be able to use why manufacturing for the analog transmission system as compared to the very hd type of the equipment should be used for the digital transmission system then effect of the noise is very high noise immunity is poor noise immunity is very poor in case of the effect of the noise here is the very low effect of the noise is low in case of the digital transmission its immu noise immunity is excellent then its efficiency is a low its efficiency is high okay. then security and privacy for the analog transmission is not very much but in case of the digital transmission coding can be applied to digital data easily integrated is not possible in case of the analog transmission but in case of the digital transmission we have integrated our voice video digital data can be easily in attenuation is a high for the analog transmission system but attenuation is a low for the digital transmission system the maintenance cost is high in case of the analog transmission system but uh, maintenance cost is the low for the digital transmission system the multiplexing technique the multiplexing technique the frequency division multiplexing technique is used for the analog transmission system but in time division multiplexing technique is used uh, for digital transmission system the error detection is not possible in case of the analog transmission system but uh, error detection system is possible for the digital transmission system because of that during the 
transmission uh, data should be encrypted and at the receiver side the authorized receiver have able to decrypted the digital data and the example is the radio transmission radio transmission is the example of the analog transmission system and the data transmission is data transmission is the example of the digital transmission system i hope that you enjoy my this session to understand the basic difference between analog communication system and the digital communication system if any doubt please you write on my comment page please subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much have a nice day